morning everyone and welcome back to our weekly programs and today we're going to be talking about blackout poetry the month of april is national poetry month and so you might have already done this exercise in classes before and if so that's okay because i think these are just really fun and if not then you learn something new today and it's always great to learn something new now usually you see blackout poetry where someone takes just a page from a book that so could be blank like this and they take a black sharpie and they cross out everything and that's where they get out like black out poetry well, well today i'm going to show you different ways because i don't like to just use black sharpies because i like to be colorful as you can tell by my outfit and, and what you'll be able to tell just by like the, the poetries we did okay. and so i took a page i took them from this one book and there will be the um Kids for You, all from the same book. I cut the pages out. Now, I know some of you might get a heart attack hearing that, but we're repurposing, we're re reusing. You can take these and you're learning from them. They're a great activity for the brain. You can just, it's really good. I promise cutting into a book is not as scary as it sounds. And if you don't want to cut into a book, that's okay. I'm going to have Kids for You with pre cut pages in it. So, you won't know where it came from. It didn't come from a book. It didn't come from a book. No. Not at all. But I took these these pages, not from a book, wink, wink. <laughs> and instead of just taking black, I would square out my words, as you can see. Some of them got covered, but that's okay. And, and I made a poem with them. So I chose my words. This one says, make the world nicer, moving in heaven taking care of them, cheerful sometime, but gray skies above. And so well, with that poem, I made something just kind of similar here to what it, what it felt like. I made a little sunny place above that you could think about that as heaven and then it's gray skies. And there's my little person pointing up and just like a grassy scene below them. So it's not just one big, big color of black because it's also will dry out your markers pretty quickly so mm. i use several different markers to make the same effect with it and and what you can do with these i've already said you can frame them for decoration i know people are still doing photo walls so maybe in between your photos you can add some poetry you've made you'd or just hang them up and like i said it really gets your brain thinking because you have to look at this page completely out of context and find something that means means something to you it can mean I mean anything really it could be about how you felt that day or I interpreted this page as is it's being sunny but it's gray outside if a lot of these mention gray skies so you might have a lot of poems about gray skies these the book was set in England so if that gives you any context it talks about gray skies a lot but it, it maybe you're not super you're artistic and you don't want to think about oh like coloring and matching and it's just too much for you because I know not everyone likes doing this stuff. Now if you can you know, make it just mm -hmm. one solid mm -hmm. color and I drew some lines. I won't read this one to you but it can also show you just different size variant, different colors. There's And you don't have to use exactly markers. There's Today I will be using markers but you could do it with pencils, you can do it with paint, you can do it with watercolors, you just might have to hold the paper down a little harder. And so this is our other poem. So such a noisy thing, he, he pushed back. A pompous fellow. One you can deal with, with nothing more than in a warning shot. And I just, just took purple because I thought it would match it very well. And just drew a man's glasses in his eyes. So it looks very interesting. And you could just interpret that any way. So you might have picked the same exact words I did but drew a completely different picture. Or you could have gotten the same page, but the same pictures, but a different poem. That's the real cool thing about it, is that you can mm -hmm. choose your own poem from the context of that one page. It's all about interpretation. As most poetry is. Mm -hmm. it's, and it's just about feelings. It could be about what you're feeling, or maybe something you've heard about. I know there's a lot going on right now, so you may be, be able to take your page and, and find some parallels you see in your world well today not just in that book page now i have one here and i'll show you before i've marked it out or blocked it out 
I went ahead and drew what my picture is going to look like before I block it out. So I just know. And I've picked out my words. Right, so I'll read it to you as I start coloring. I just have Sharpies and some colored pencils. But again, you don't need any fancy stuff. If you can do it with Crayola markers, you can just do it with your pencil. Just anything that you, you have. So this poem says, is, why are you here? The person and says, horrified. I kind of made this one look like text messages so you know who's talking to each other. That's very cool. And see, you could just do it that way. And maybe you saw a conversation in it, or maybe you have a page you copied from a book and you really like their conversation, so you can block it out to what they were saying in your interpretation. And so this side says, horrified. I have no time to waste. Save your breath. And they ask, why are you here? I don't trust them. I understand. And so you'll just go back and forth and make it look like a text message. So you don't have to necessarily block out all the other words, like you're blacking them out. You can just leave them blank and you're just highlighting the words that you want to keep. Yes. Okay. You don't have to block out everything because, like I said, it does really dry out your markers if you try to do it the entire page. That's why I try to do different colors. Or just have a small page like that dark red one. And there's some people that do the same thing where they kind of circle the words. Mm -hmm. But instead of like making shapes with them, like I'm doing with the text messages, they just kind of map the words together. So they'll, they'll take their pen or marker and they'll draw a line from the first word or the first section to the next word and just kind of direct your eyes to which way it should be read. Okay. And like I said, it gets you really thinking about what you should put on the page or what you should kind of highlight out of the page. It makes you think, think like those, um, what games are they? The brain age games. You might have had them on like your DS when you were younger. Uh -huh. they're, they're bringing that to Nintendo Switch. And I was very excited to hear that. that but it makes you think, think, not just about math, but like about your feelings, about what that you're doing. And, and it's a great way to, to do poetry because not everyone in likes writing poetry or a lot of people have difficult times writing po poems because maybe they just don't want them to be free verse, which means not rhyming, but it's still in a rhythm. Or maybe you're really bad at rhyming. I, mean, I can't say I'm the best at rhyming. I think people think it has to be one certain way and it doesn't have to especially if it's your own work it can be any way you want it and there's a bunch of different types of poetry you, you know your usual rhyming one this this blackout poetry it can be um the poetry that's in a shape i forget the name of that one but you can write a poem about tornadoes and your sentences be in a tornado shape right um and there's just many different ways about it and we probably won't talk about them all this month and th but our other libraries if you watch our other libraries programs they they have been doing some poetry readings things and i highly recommend them because because they're wonderful and just while oh well, i'm blocking out these last couple ones we do have several poetry books we got a lot of new ones for poetry month this month jason reynolds if you've never read him has a lot of good poetry so does Amanda Lovelace. I've read some of hers. I can't say I've read Caroline Kaufman, but she is now, I believe she's 19 or 20, but when she wrote her first couple of books, she was the same age as most of you guys. And, and we do have extraordinary poetry writing, and this book will probably tell you more about the different types of poems and just what you can do to improve your poems. So if you have time, or you want to check out these books, we would love to see you come in the library and maybe you can ask us our recommendations about poetry books. I know I have a lot of them, including some of the ones I put up here today. Before you go, I'll show you this last little poem we made. And that, guys, is our blackout poetry. Very cool. And you can just do it however you want. And if you guys do make some or come pick up a kit, we would love to see it. You're always welcome to tag us at the Ditton in Public Library on Facebook. Or if you use Instagram, it's just the Ditton Library. 
or if you, you want, you can bring them in and we'll find a way to display them for you guys. So well, thank you for joining us this week. I hope you will do some blackout poetry. And I'll see you next time. Bye guys.